What is Surrealism? Surrealism was one of the major artistic and poetic movements of the 20th century, which was founded in 1924 by the French poet André Robert Breton. But it is important to note that the death of historic Surrealism was announced by John Schuster in an article published in Le Monde on 4 October 1969, but it is almost universally accepted that the influence of Surrealism is still an integral part of the modern sensibility. Breton had been associated with the Paris, Dada, and Surrealism always retained something of that movement's destructive energy, but was much more organized and coherent. With its numerous manifestos and tracts, its repeated attempts to create a pantheon, or canon of exemplary authors from the past, and its highly personalized quarrels and schisms, which are wickedly satirized in Raymond Cano's novel Odile, 1937, the Surrealist movement established a pattern that would be followed by many of the 20th century's avant-garde movements from Situationism to the Telquel group. Breton was always the prime mover, and it's often described as the Pope of Surrealism. The history of Surrealism can be written as the history of his quarrels with Louis Aragon, Antonin Artaud, Georges Albert Maurice Victor Bataille, and, not least, Salvador Dali, commonly regarded as the quintessential Surrealist painter, but contemptuously dismissed by Breton as a Vida Dollars when he began to create Surrealist window displays for New York stores. The adjective Surreal, which means super, or supra-real, was coined by the poet Guillaume Apollinaire in 1917 to describe his burlesque play, The Breasts of Tiresias. The noun surrealism was coined by Breton in 1924, and defined as a pure physical automatism designed to express the real workings of thought in the absence of any controls exercised by reason, and as pure nonconformism. Hence, put simply, Surrealism is a modern movement in art and literature that aims for the liberation of the mind by emphasizing the critical and imaginative powers of the subconscious. The second Surrealist Manifesto described Surrealist activity as an attempt to reach an intellectual point at which life and death, real and imaginary, past and future, the communicable and the incommunicable, and up and down, all cease to be seen as contradictory. In both manifestos, Surrealism is described as a revolt against all forms of realism and even rationality, and as an attempt to unleash unconscious creative forces. Their interest in the unconscious led the Surrealists to champion Freud's psychoanalysis at a time when the French medical profession was deeply suspicious of that German science, and Surrealism had a major and lasting effect on the young Jacques Lacan, even though it was viewed with incomprehending indifference by Freud himself. It is important to note that the revolt against realism inspired a deep suspicion of the novel. As a matter of fact, poetry and painting are the preferred modes of expression in surrealism. For example, in Breton's Nadja, photographs take the place of conventional descriptive passages, and Anatole France, one of the most respected novelists of the 1920s, was described as a corpse. In surrealism, a variety of techniques were employed to capture the true workings of thought, including automatic writing, or the immediate transcription of whatever came into the mind, self-induced trances, and word games, like Le Cadaver Exquis, the French equivalent to the game known in English as Consequences. The aesthetics of Surrealist poetry also centers upon the production of a starting image, through the juxtaposition of unrelated words or phrases, the classic model being borrowed from Lautremann's The Songs of Maldoror, as beautiful as the chance encounter of an umbrella, and a sewing machine on a dissecting table. Surrealist painters, like Max Ernst, use techniques such as frittage, which involves placing a sheet of paper on a rough surface, rubbing it so as to acquire the properties of the surface and then taking the resultant image as a stimulus to the imagination, collage, and the random juxtaposition of objects and images. Others, like Dali, Paul Delvo, and René Magritte employ an almost hyperrealist style to depict obsessive dream images. Surrealist poetry and art are intended to be unsettling and to produce a frisson of excitement as the artist and reader come into sudden contact with the marvelous. As Breton puts it in the last lines of Nadja, beauty will be convulsive, or it will not be. 
The quest for the marvelous and for convulsive beauty promotes an interest in African, and other forms of non-European primitive art, particularly Mexican, which had begun to be celebrated by Picasso and the Cubists, and a fascination with the occult, but it also leads to a new and disturbing vision of the city, and especially Paris. In Nadja, Breton repeatedly encounters a mysterious young woman, who is in fact mentally ill. Their nocturnal wanderings through Paris represent Breton's classic image of the theme of mad love, or the pursuit of irrational passion, but they are also a Flano-like exploration of a city full of unconscious associations. Together with Aragon's Paris Peasant, which had a significant influence on Walter Benjamin, Nadja is one of the most haunting evocations of Paris. Politically, surrealism is a movement of the non-conformist left. Attempts to come to a rapprochement with the French Communist Party in the mid-1920s ended in a bitter disillusionment with organized politics and to the break between Breton and Aragon, who became the party's poet laureate and a convent to socialist realism. Breton's own sympathies tended to lie with Trotsky, but like most surrealists, he was temperamentally unsuited to the discipline of conventional political activity. It is interesting to note that eroticism was a major surrealist preoccupation, and the discussions of sexuality and personal sexual preferences were published in La Revolution Surrealiste from 1928 to 1932. The original surrealist group was all male, and it is often argued that surrealism is a misogynist movement which exploits women as muses, and makes them the object of a voyeuristic, or even sadistic male gaze. In particular, Hans Belmer's Dismembered Dolls of 1936, which can be seen as the source for Lacan's fantasy of the fragmented body, have been denounced as being offensive to women. Recent reassessments have concentrated more on the work of women artists, such as Leonora Carrington and Merit Oppenheim, who came to be associated with the group in the 1930s, and suggest that surrealism did in fact open up areas that allowed a specifically female creativity to emerge. Although surrealism is primarily a French phenomenon, it had international repercussions. In 1936, the International Surrealist Exhibition at London's New Burlington Galleries attracted an astonishing 25,000 visitors in three weeks and convincingly demonstrated the popular appeal of surrealism. Its history in Britain is traced in the exhibition catalogue of surrealism in Britain in the 30s, and Edward Bijaman has edited a comprehensive anthology of surrealist poetry from Britain and America.